Greetings, salutations, how are you? My name is Jake Query. That is Derek Schultz. This is the incredibly creatively and appropriately named Query and Schultz program here on ISC. And this is show number, what number are we on, Derek? 48. Is it really? Yep. Because 47, I didn't think of this at the time. Mel Blunt. We, last, yeah, last week was Victory Field, and I thought, okay, live show, different category, but Greg was right. That was our real show. That wasn't an add-on show like our previous one. Right. So last week was technically 47. I think clearly Tom Glavin is the only other one that I thought of. Mel Blunt's one of, like, the 30 greatest players probably ever Yeah, uh, still to this day. So that's 47. 48, though, is a tricky one because I was thinking stick and ball sports. But then, well, I mean, I think most people around here would say Jimmy Johnson. Yeah, right away, right? I that for some I reason think Jimmy didn't Johnson, register for me. It has to be show Jimmy Johnson only because Jimmy Johnson, in the history of this show, did live donuts at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway in a pace car with Derek in it, yep. and intentionally we decided to make you well, you freak out. Yeah, I'll say that one of the coolest experiences of my That's life. Pretty cool. Not gonna lie, almost ten years ago. 2012 that was that when that was and then this he went on to Derek, win the race this is an anniversary show is it not yeah are, extent? i'm so happy that you're excited about this and I'm that you remember excited about it at all that you're not excited about it but it is true that 10 years ago in august of 2011 query and schultz was born because they hired me didn't tell me they were hiring derek they hired derek didn't tell derek they were hiring me <laughs> and then they threw us both together on the air at like 255 and said oh by the way you guys are both doing this have at yeah, you can see the headline on the monitor there. I mean, that's that's essentially what the last 10 years have been. Yeah, so the, okay. the viewers at home actually know that. No, August 15th, 2011, so technically Sunday, we're taping this right now on the 16th Monday, was the uh, the 10-year anniversary. And it was, uh, to be you know kind of a full disclosure about that, the show, we, we did not – we knew each other. Right. We did not had, – had ever met before, before – what was it, Friday night or Saturday night? We were up at George's Neighborhood Grill at 71st and Benford. That's right. And we met our then PD, Buzz Casey. I think Rick Green might have been there as well. I, I, I don't just remember. Buzz. Okay. And I had it kind of like you. See, I feel underdressed. Uh, Jake, un unfortunately, sadly came from Bob Jenkins' memorial Correct. service, which is why you're dressed the way that you are. But – the roles were reversed the first time that we met. Like, I looked like that. Yeah, you were ready for your first day and of school. you had a... You had a little lunchbox and everything? Quebec Nordiques, no, Winnipeg Cal Jets. Calgary Flames. Okay, it was one of the Canadian NHL teams. Calgary shirt Flames. on. Backwards hat. Yeah. And I thought, wow. You know, first off, the t-shirt is wildly inappropriate, but a backwards hat to the meeting with our bosses. Crazy. And we talked a little bit about the show, and the one thing that I remember about that first meeting was at the very end of it, you said, I think I'm going to roll in around, like, Two two fifteen, if that's okay with you. Yeah, and I was thinking to myself, is this guy serious? What what am <laughs> I signed up for here? Like we, this is our full time job, and uh, of course two fifteen two two fifteen turned more into like two thirty five two forty five. Of course, <laughs> it's not brain surgery. Around you roll there, in, you do a show. It's right? weird. it's kind of one of those things where. It, it, it doesn't feel like it's been 10 years, but then again, you think about where you Lots were in happened. your life then, and it, you know, I've gotten engaged, married, had a kid, bought a house. Like, there's so many things that have happened in the last 10 years, unrelated to the show, of course. But um, it's it's cool. It's it's cool to think that this thing, which I thought maybe, be, maybe best case scenario, had an 18-month shelf life when we first signed up, has lasted that long. I have in the last 10 years, Derek, from 10 years ago to now, I have the same residence, same girlfriend, got a new car, and a stent. Yeah. <laughs> and pretty, almost died. Pretty, pretty much <laughs> the, Pretty much all that's I was looking at some old pictures, and the only thing that really looks different is uh, your hair is a little more gray it's on the sides. Very gray, yes. And I grew the beard, which helps kind of cover up, because when I didn't have the beard, it, you just look heavier. And I was heavier. I was about 15 to 20 See, pounds. See, I look heavier, heavier when I have a beard, I think. Really? Yeah. I mean, it was mostly muscle, but I was like 15 to 20 pounds heavier then. I was still drinking pretty fairly regularly really? then. Not like drinking like had a problem, but like socially drinking. And um, well, I know that I, that that has helped. What year did we first go to the life. Final Four? We first went that that spring, 2012, New yeah. Orleans. So you're right. You were drinking because. Oh, come on. You came into the room no. with someone's do not disturb sign. That's no. Spiked it. That'll teach nope. you not to mess with Derek Schultz. That is 100% <laughs> like, false. What is going on? 100% Someone false. has liquid courage. No, um, did not happen. I would like to thank, by the way, uh, I had a great time, as you did, I know, as well, at the Bailey and Wood Golf Outing. What an unbelievable yeah. turnout in terms of a fundraiser. Uh, Jeff Saturday was there. 
And I got there and pulled in, and I had to park. The, you know, it was at the the die course down in Greenwood. Dies walk, yeah. Uh, dies walk, yeah. Uh, I actually parked in Zionsville <laughs> and then walked back. They had a golf cart that picked me up. I, I, it was unbelievable the turnout, and the folks at Bailey and Wood uh, were couldn't have been nicer to us. Yeah, Mike Wood's a great dude. Uh, right. Thirty grand raised as well, so uh, they've done a lot philanthropically. And uh, he's built that thing from the ground up. I mean, I remember that first office, and I think it was their first office in Whiteland, uh, a little downtown Whiteland, and now 13 Indiana branch locations, uh, BAWFG.com. We might as well just Ball F- – Yeah, we might as well just knock it out Bailey right and Wood, <laughs> BAWFG.com. 855-350-HOME. Um, and now Jeff Saturday, part of the Bailey and Wood That's right. family. Mortgages in a snap. Yeah, what a great slogan as it well. Is. See, you know, everything that they do is A++. Yeah, and, and you know what? You could tell the thing that I thought was really cool. Mike came up. I had not met him before. You have. But he came up to introduce himself, and in doing so, you know, mentioned his wife and his family and, and – had his daughter there so you could tell it's like this is indiana through and through family-owned business and one that's helping families get into a home and and you know get the the dream of home ownership so very cool to be a part something about how his wife liked this your voice on indy cars i think she did say that i have a good voice yeah which Which is much appreciated this happens sometimes this happened especially in radio less so now because you can actually see us but sometimes people for some reason think that my voice is yours so they're like, yes, okay. I think Jake has this really like kind of sexy, sultry voice. And I'm thinking to myself, well, J- Jake's voice isn't sexy or sultry at all. They must be talking about me. And it turns out they were talking about me. Like okay. kind of the raspiness of it, the the strong male presence. That you think I you have a raspy voice? I hate my voice. I have a little bit of a, well, I smoked cigarettes for like 15 years. So that's probably part of it. Newport's? I mixed in Newports. I was mostly Camel Lights and then Menthols. I was Marlboro Milds, the blue box. Okay. I don't even like talking about it because I'm embarrassed that I did that for so long. It's gross. Um, Over the weekend, obviously, the Colts getting preseason game number one in the books. It's hard to know what exactly you can gauge from the preseason because so much can change. But I think one thing is for certain, Derek, I think Jacob Eason made some really good throws. Uh, you know, maybe t- at times he held on to the ball too long. But I thought Eason looked pretty poised and comfortable in the pocket, and I think that they have a really good receiver set. Yeah, let's talk about the quarterbacks first. I do want to talk about the receivers too. I was really impressed with Jacob Eason. I thought that he looked about the best that he could possibly look in his – got to remember, first – NFL game at all anything close to this yes it's the preseason but this is his first time doing this right and I think the issue with him has never been the the gifts the physical uh, attributes that he has he has all of that all of what you need the body the arm it's everything else and it's it's you know reads and decision and, making you know touch on ball right. as opposed to throwing it 200 miles an hour and I thought he put everything on display I thought that deep ball to Paris Campbell showed off that touch a little bit he could show the zip as well when he wanted to uh, I I thought he looked terrific and and Sam Ellinger even though he uh, threw a really bad interception early and looked a little bit out of sorts recovered nicely too so I I think he. You had both quarterbacks play well. I, I would give Eason an AA plus, and I'd give Ellinger probably um, a B, B minus, my which dad, is still pretty good for their first game. My dad watched the game, sent me a text. I was doing uh, the, we'll say the Brickyard, but the the, the mm-hmm. Cup race out at the Speedway, and my dad sent me a text and said, "Interested to see what you think of the Colts once you watch, you know, some of the highlights." Um, he said Eason looked good, and then he said this, which I found interesting from my dad. Uh, Ellinger looks really good, particularly considering built like Derek. Yeah, he's a little bit, you know, kind of stocky. But that's the Is thing. He, I mean, you, you underestimate someone like that, and then they punch you right in the eye. You know what I mean? And that's kind of how I've always been as well. Right. And Sam Ellinger can do that. Uh, you know, the the thing that is difficult with preseason games when it comes to analyzing players is you don't, you know, you look at it, and you can say, okay, well, you know, look at what, wow, look at what he did in, in the drive to in the half or in this. How many NFL players is he doing that against? Yeah. You know, you don't know what the opposition is putting out there and how much they're showing in terms of true representation of, you know, the, the real measure for an NFL quarterback, if you talk to, to analysts, coaches, scouts, whatever it might be, the real difference between college and the professional level in reality 
is the collapse time. And by collapse time, Derek, what I mean by that is you're dropping back to pass. You know you've got a window to get a ball to your receiver. The time between when the defense has given the receiver space and they collapse in on the play. In college, let's say it's two seconds. That means professionally it's 1.1 seconds. I mean, it literally goes like that. And so knowing that timing is the most challenging thing, I think, for a quarterback. So in the preseason, if you're getting a guy that's getting accustomed to collapse time, is he getting the true 1.1 window? And I'm just throwing out numbers. Or is he getting 1.8? You know what I mean? Yeah. There are definitely variables that, that you don't know how much they're there. Yeah, even if they're twos and threes, and in some cases guys that aren't even going to make a roster right. period for Carolina, it's still much different than facing TCU or Oregon State for Eason and, and Ellinger. So I, I just needed to see them in game action, so finally we have something to judge. You also don't know – you know, for we'll take Carolina for example, since that was the opposition. You know, how much is Carolina actually running versus what they're going to be running in Week Four of the NFL? Yeah, season? no, they, people don't want to tip their hand. Um, I mean, you saw it. Generally speaking, and maybe my memory is wrong about this. You, you would know from being at six, fifteen, twenty years ago. I feel like the first preseason game, we'd see the ones for a quarter and a half. You or usually even a did. Half, right? Usually, the way it worked was game one. You saw the starters for like a quarter. Game two, you saw the starters for maybe a half. Game three was was the the biggest simulation. Yeah, three quarters a lot of times. Game four was Nobody. guys that thanks yeah. for showing up, and you know we got a couple guys we got to take a final look at. Yeah, if game you're four playing, has never been anybody. If you're playing significant snaps in game four of the preseason, mm -hmm. then you probably are excited for the state fair. Yeah, I just thought <laughs> I just saw Carolina and Indy. I mean, they they barely any of the. Not certainly not the frontline players, and then barely any of the ones even played. At Speaking all. of the state fair, we're going to be at the uh, Dairy Bar coming up on the 18th, right? Yeah, Dairy Barn coming up. I don't want to confuse it's, people. Uh, we'll be at the Dairy Barn coming up on Wednesday. The email that they sent to us. How did they refer to it when they invited us? I get emails with typos all the time, and that, <laughs> okay. I didn't want to point that out. I didn't want to embarrass our friends at ADAI, but. Apparently, you wanted to go public with The that. American Dairy Association of Indiana will have us at the Dairy Bar at the Indiana State Fair serving milkshakes, grilled cheese, and other such delicious items. That will be coming up. I believe we're going to be there from 2 until 3 o'clock, right? Yep. And why not come out and get a dairy product? Because as you know, especially when it comes to milk, all of the benefits that come with it in terms of protein, all the different vitamins that come with it, calcium, Everybody loves milk. 100%. And everybody loves the dairy 2%, barn. 2%, actually. And all of the offerings that they have over there. Let's talk about uh, some other things unrelated to the quarterbacks. You mentioned the receivers. Um, Michael Strawn continues to really Looks impress. Good. And he's the guy that I've always kind of wanted the Colts to have. And they've, they've only really had this a handful of times, and it's never worked out. Like Devin Funches. Yeah. We played like, what, three quarters or something? And then I think he had a – Collarbone, yep. and then was done for the year. Clavicle, but like, I think is what that a is. A big dude, a big tall target, and they really haven't had that over the years. And I'm not saying that Strawn is ready to be like their their one, two, or three, but he's just trying to make the roster. Period. Uh, his playmaking ability is really tantalizing. Yeah, it athletically, is. he's extremely gifted. Well, he uh, look again. A couple of weeks of preseason in camp does not a season or a career make, mm -hmm. but he does look like he is. It's one thing to be a big body and look the part Roy Hall. Yep. It's another to be able to then deliver and make catches. He's making catches. Yeah. You know, I mean, what do you have, three for 57, I think? Yeah. So we'll see how that kind of that last spot plays out because the problem for the Colts is that there's not a lot of room at the at the end, really, at wide receiver. You know their top four is going to be their top four. And then Doolin – because of his abilities as a special team gunner, is probably in line for that fifth spot just because he's so valuable there. Are you worried at all about the left side of the offensive line? Yeah, one hundred percent. Because they don't have they don't have an NFL player right now playing left tackle. Like no offense to to Julian Davenport and Sam Tevy and um, Will Holden, but none of those guys I shouldn't say can't play. They can be backup players, right. which is what they've been Rotational primarily backup, throughout their career. Rotational backup But if, guys, if sure. they're your LT1, you are screwed. Left, You're that's very scared. LT1 is starting left you tackle. You can't have an LT1 of that caliber. Starting left tackle. You could, probably, you could probably get away with having a subpar backup level, replacement level RG1. Because the some of their parts right guard in the offensive starter. line can make up for that. But LT1, such a big – I mean, outside of QB1 is is probably the biggest position on the field. just say starter. Just say starter. Why, why do you keep interrupting me? I'm, trying to, make, I'm trying to make a point. 
It sounds ridiculous. Do you want to talk football on this show or not? It sounds like you're trying too hard. I'm just trying to talk football, Jake. It's 2021. Get with the times. Okay. Now, now by 2021, are I mean, you talking do, do about you want the, to use antiquated are, terms? Is, is that the 20th and the 21st on the depth chart? Okay. Well, or is that the year? It's clearly the year. You're the one that's know. confusing people, not me. So it's so. Are you saying it's YR20, YR21? That sounds ridiculous. No, I'm not saying that. LT1 doesn't. LT1 is football jargon. Okay. okay. S- sometimes I just. Do you do you like sports? It, it's football jargon because for we're, people. This is supposed to be a f- okay. sports esque show. And I've noticed I oftentimes sure like there sports. are certain things that are jargon used by those who have. You ever been in a locker room, Derek? Well, I've been in a locker room, <laughs> not, not right. as a player, right. but that's, I have been inside that's my a point. locker room. Yes. So I, I can you tell meant. you're like a little fanboy, little blogger. Never been. I, in a I locker just room. think see, and and this is we're pushing the people like you out, <laughs> and people like me right are is it coming the, in. Is it the gray? Is that it? Is it the gray? I mean, if you think of some of the really respected voices and analysts. Yes, you have a lot of guys that were former players, but like one of my favorites, I don't mean to get too off track here, NBA wise is Zach Lowe. Zach Lowe's not played, right? But he's really smart. You know who and he knows a, what he's talking about. Here's a great about. question. Who is somebody that when they are an analyst for a game, you say that you, you like what you love watching? Oh, I thought games. you were gonna say hey, because there are a couple no. that I that I really I, don't I think like. Kirk Herb Street is outstanding. Yeah, really I mean, he good. played, obviously. Yeah. But you know who I always liked, and they, they kind of pushed him off of the Notre Dame broadcast, and he stopped doing NFL Network stuff. I always thought Mike Mayock was really informative and good. Yeah. Who's good? This is going to be unpopular because everybody can't stand this guy. Personally, I enjoy Chris Collinsworth. I, I don't mind I Collinsworth. like Chris Collinsworth. I don't mind Collinsworth. I think he's I think he's good at it. I just and everybody think all I can think about him. with Chris Collinsworth is when he played for the Bengals and he had this real like weird neck and, and – yeah. It was kind of weird. I think he comes off as smarmy, and so people don't like the tone. But that's kind of what than, I like about him. More than the content, I think people are focused on the tone. But um, there, are, there are plenty of guys I don't like. Speaking of the content, let me know the content that we need to get to today. We got a ton of other stuff to get to. Um, we can kind of mix in some more cults later on, but you were at IMS all I weekend. Was. And it was a great Saturday. Not so much a good Sunday. In fact, it's kind of a disaster of a Sunday, if we're being totally honest. So we'll pick up the pieces from that. The Malice at the Palace stock released. And I think both of us have kind of some interesting perspective, having been – that was my first experience in the media uh, during that season and and now reflecting on that 15, 16 years later, I saw a lot of reactions, some stuff that I agreed with, some stuff that I really didn't agree with at all when it comes to that. Oh, we've got our quick hits. Okay. Which is a new segment that we're doing. No, do not touch me. <laughs> you touched me several okay. times during the Indian show, right. and I was going to let that pass, but do not physically touch me at any okay. point. And all of our features, our WGU Indiana Sage Move of the Week, uh, Love HVACs, Love That Play, and The Shop, as you see all there, and I'm wearing one. They've got some new ones Hot coming out, shirt. too. Ray yep. Thompson, the latest. The Shop Spider Bowl Bleak. Okay, all so we'll do all of that coming up as we continue here on ISC and Quarry and Schultz. It's here. The moment that will define you. So think of this moment as your moment. The one you've been waiting for. You were built for it. And so were we. WGU, the online university where ambition never rests. At Bailey & Wood, we pride ourselves on our five-star customer service, but at our core, we're a family. Family Family-owned and family to our customers, staff, and our community. From charity events to recognizing hometown heroes, we prioritize giving back to our communities that have always supported our growth. So let us help you get your dream home today. You're watching Query and Schultz on the ISC Sports Network. Meet Chip. 30 years ago, he started a small business with a big idea. Today, there's a new building, a new fleet of equipment, and a new era of leadership. But we know Chip. 
And at Indiana Members Credit Union, we know he plans to keep growing, building business with the next generation. IMCU is here to help with secure and simple account management tools and commercial financing to grow business. Today, it's all about CHIP. Tomorrow, it's all about you. Because at IMCU, it's you that matters. Rolling along nicely as we start year 11 of Quarry and Schultz here on the ISC Sports Network. We're rolling along nicely. Made it through a first decade. Here's the decade number two. That's actually true, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Did a good job. Uh, happy birthday and happy anniversary in order for Stephen Moore of Chateau Kitchens. Missed his birthday, I think it was over the weekend, and we're taping right now on Monday, and I think he had a post today that it was his wedding anniversary. Really? So congrats to Stephen for Wait, that Wait, he got married dude. on his birthday? My mom got married on her birthday. Smart. Yeah. Never forget yeah, the old. I got to send two cards, though, and then, t- you know, do I double up on flowers with that? I've been doing just single flowers. Like a just, single flower? No, no, not, just, not a single flower. Yeah, I picked you a flower. <laughs> Here you go, Mommy. No, uh, a, a full bouquet, but because it's a double holiday You know what you should, holiday get, you, you should get your mom? A double celebration. This sounds, that, that sounds the wrong it, Both your parents would enjoy a fabulous new kitchen from Chateau Kitchens. Yeah. And home remodeling. That's what I got from Chateau Kitchens. That was a gift for me, though. Yeah. And for Ashley. So that was our gift to ourselves. Okay. If you've got a project... Uh, remodeling, cabinetry especially, but anything on the interior of your house, basements, bathrooms, not just kitchens, even though we focus on kitchens. Of course, kitchens is in the name for Chateau Kitchens. Check them out online, chateaukitchens.com. Nope, the name is Chateau. Got to get it right. At Chateau Kitchens on Instagram, you can see some of the before and afters. Also on Facebook, um, at Chateau Kitchens. The before and afters are my favorite because you see like these very like 1990s style kitchens right. like dark colors and then they smash all that stuff up and put in this beautiful new space it's great uh website one more time chateau kitchens.com okay so derek uh while you were watching the colts and carolina panthers i was watching the verizon 200 at the brickyard which is of course the inaugural race on the road course of the indianapolis motor speedway for nascar cup cars and it was you know, after a year ago with the Xfinity race, the Xfinity race was so exciting out at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway a year ago on the road course that you really, myself included, people I think were very excited to see what the cup cars could do. And, you know, the reality is I think the Brickyard 400, Derek, would you say it had run its course, pardon the pun? Yeah, I, I think the apathy level had, I think it had bottomed out if that and, and right. wasn't going to go any lower, but it wasn't going to go any higher from where it was. So they put it on the road course, and, and I think people were excited about it, and it was a, a good show, and it was enjoyable until the last three laps yeah. when basically all hell broke loose because in the 4-5-6 combo, the curbing, look, and a, lot, and a lot of people ask me this. They're like, well, how come the, the Indy cars were able to have no problem? and stock cars, it was an issue. Well, the weight and the balance of the cars are two totally different things. So it's a totally different driving style. Um, Once the curbing came up, I mean, I think the thought process was, let's go ahead and just remove the curbing. But you had to have something because when the drivers had gone and tested there, that was the one thing they said is, look, we need an area there to slow us down because there's so much speed coming through in the S's there. So they, you know, it became a situation where I I must have heard in my ear – seemingly 15 times okay uh looks like we're gonna go one more lap under caution we're gonna go one more lap under caution we're gonna go and i'm thinking and of course i'm thinking to myself like i'd love to like use the restroom but i'm kind of stuck where i am yeah so you know people were patient and waited it out the unfortunate thing is that is what people will remember but in particular after it, I mean, there was some really good racing throughout the course of the race. Yeah, it, it casts a shadow over the whole thing, right? Because yeah. I was a big proponent of going to the road course because I think they put on a better show, and they did. Uh, there's something fun about NASCARs on road courses because obviously they can make a lot more contact than open-wheel Correct. cars, so they're just dive-bombing each other they all are. the time. The problem is, is that then when you have an issue and everybody's in dive-bomb mode, you know, it becomes kind of a problem. And you you have the thing with, with Briscoe punting Hamlin. And, uh, you know, there's there's some stuff that goes on sometimes where I'm like, this sucks. This It sucks that guys have to do that to each other. And races sometimes end up that way. But, 
Yeah, the ending was a mess. And, you know, Jake, sometimes I wonder with the effort that they put into for a green-white checkered, should there just be sort of a limit on how many times they're willing to do that before finally they say, you know what, yeah, we're ending under caution. Okay, we, we, we tried. We, we gave this a couple of attempts. Like, let's just – let's throw up the yellow and, that, and do that's it. That's a fair point. I, I also – the one thing that I will say – not being around NASCAR races a lot. I mean, it's disingenuous to say that I am, but is it time to revisit the stage racing? Because as I'm watching it, so I'm up there in turn one of the oval, which is 12, 13, 14 of the road course. And I'm looking at the the monitor and I'm seeing, okay, there's two laps left in stage one. And the leader was, you know, at that point, I, I can't remember who was leading the race. Um, it was like Briscoe, Elliott, Larson was like third or fourth and they all go to pit road and I'm like wait a minute there's there's two laps left in the stage and like nine of the top 10 cars all just went to pit road (laughs) doesn't anyone want to win the stage right yeah (laughs) so Tyler Reddick wins stage one and I'm like okay you know good for Tyler Reddick get some points whatever and then stage two's coming and there's two laps left and like the front 16 all pit and I'm like, here we go. Mm-hmm. Tyler Reddick wins stage two. And I'm, th- so if the drivers aren't concerned or have care about who's going to win the stage, then why are we doing it? Yeah, I'm, I'm with you there. And it's too bad because, again, I've been – I've almost kind of turned into a bit of a NASCAR defender. Like, I, I appreciate it for what it is. I, full disclosure, I enjoy open-wheel IndyCar racing more, but I like stock – like, I'm not – there's this right there's this element of IndyCar fans that you know they hate everything that has to do with with NASCAR and I'm not like that at all but they they've tried so many different things and there have been so many contrived elements right. that they've tried to implement and um over the years it's just it's just kind of eroded for me I feel like you know who did a nice job especially in qualifying and ran pretty well and then had a couple of things kind of go against them um but this was the stock car debut for Sage Karam, yeah. who we know was partnered with our friend Rolando. But um, he ended up finishing 26th, I think, qualified 18th, but at one point was running up towards the front and kind of got shuffled back. But I thought he was impressive considering he'd never been in a stock car before. And then I realized his name is Sage, right? That's right. Oh, okay. So we're going to transition right into that. I'm just saying. Yeah. Look at look at Sage the Owl. Look at those beautiful eyes. For our podcast listeners. Beautiful we've eyes. Got, yeah, so well, what we're doing right is we're us. showing the, the logo here for WGU. WGU.edu slash Indiana. Of course, WGU is the largest online accredited university in the state of Indiana. So you can work on your own schedule with your own flexibility, your own hours. Whether you want to go back to school or you're thinking about just now starting a degree and you're worried about the time commitment to it, do it on your time because ambition never rests. And that's why WGU, WGU is always there for you. And, of course, they also do our Sage Move of the Week, which we'll do later in the yeah, show. Yeah, but you could tell on the radio that Sage, that this was very, very new waters that he was trying to swim in. And I think even he would admit, oh, my God, this is – you don't really know until you experience it, Right. right? Um, and to be in line like he was for a top 15, maybe even a top 10 finish for a lot of that race, I think was pretty yeah, impressive. impressive. But I've never questioned his talent. I mean, he's a, he's a talented guy. And I, I like the fact, you know, A.J. Allmendinger, was it a little bit of a, okay, whoever's left, here you go, here's the – yeah, I'm not going to lie. But I always like when Indianapolis has winners that – appreciates what it means to right. win in Indianapolis. And, and he clearly he does. And he afterwards paid tribute to Bob Jenkins and yeah. Robin Miller. And, you know, it was cool. It was I mean, AJ cool. hadn't won in like eight years anyway. Right. But I, I think it was a big deal for him to say that he won in Indy. It was but, definitely cool. But this talk about, okay, well, now they got to go back to the Oval. That's it. I, I don't think so. I'd like to see them try to clean this up. Kind of like Nashville. We just talked about it last week. Like, th- to me. T- minor tweaks. Yes. Yeah. You have a good product like the racing was good when it wasn't a complete blank show you know i think there are things to tweak that can make this a really good event just like we said about nashville last week did your your dad enjoys racing right yep uh did he was he tempted at all to try this new variation of it or is he still upset over the the crv 
Oh, yeah, because we did uh, many moons ago. We got our uh, car broken into during the brickyard. No, he has, <laughs> he has separated those two. He, he's really mad at himself for letting that happen because my parents were still living in Connecticut then, and they were going to catch the race and then head to the airport hotel and then fly out the next morning. And unfortunately, they had their suitcases in the car, and we parked at – I'm not going to say which church that decided to charge – Forty dollars to park there, and then had nobody guard the lot, so they took their money and ran. But one of the churches there in Speedway did that, and um, somebody smashed in the back window and um, got got a dated laptop from my dad's work. Nice. This was before he retired, and a couple of his cholesterol pills. So they probably thought, "Hey, look at all these brown bottles. We got a big store." Yeah. Uh, guess what? Not not a big score at all. Well, because but their cholesterol is good now. They've though, got right? great LDLs, I guess. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, hey, IU basketball beat a couple of uh, all-star teams from uh, Ivan Renko's friends. Right? Yes, uh, we're going to talk about that. That's part of our quick hits. Okay. Corian Schultz quick hits. Because I didn't think we needed to – do not touch me. I didn't gotcha. think that we needed to dedicate an entire fast segment fast to – Okay, just don't. Exhibition. Okay. You said very, quick hits. Got to be very, very careful. Exhibition basketball in August. But uh, next, speaking of hoops, while that's on the brain, Malice in the Palace, the doc, both of our reactions, uh, some of the things that we liked and maybe didn't like about the film when we returned. Okay. It's Quarian Schultz, ISC Sports Network. Stick around. The buzzer! Got it! <laughs> she got it! Oh my goodness. goodness! What a Pretty. shit! Hello! Did it again. Hello! Made the highlight reel again. <laughs> that goes to Metro oh, and all kinds of room to run. Down the middle of the field, and he will not be touched. Jackson, hello! There we go. Snokes throws it. Caught ball ricochets! Wow. A huge hit! Wow! This has been an amazing display of goal scoring. It's here. The moment that will define you. So think of this moment as your moment. The one you've been waiting for. You were built for it. And so were we. WGU, the online university where ambition never rests. At Bailey & Wood, we pride ourselves on our five-star customer service, but at our core, we're a family. Family-owned and family to our customers, staff, and our community. From charity events to recognizing hometown heroes, we prioritize giving back to our communities that have always supported our growth. So let us help you get your dream home today. We're back on Quarry and Schultz. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Derek Schultz. Jay Quarry here as well. This portion of the show brought to you by our friends at Indiana Members Credit Union, better known as IMCU, a new sponsor on the show. And when they came to us and they said, look, Quarry and Schultz, everybody's talking about it. We want to be part of this. And so we said, sure. Right. And we've been very selective about who we partner up with. And IMCU's got a great brand. We've got a great brand. It's a natural marriage. Um, they wanted to put together a feature particularly when the regular season starts about kind of a player of the game sort of thing around, Somebody who cashed around in. football. Yeah. And I figured, well, most of the time that's going to be a Colts guy, right? Because we're talking Colts and this right. is a Colts show. So why don't we do that for IMCU this week? I wasn't planning on doing it until the regular season, but pick a player from the preseason game. I mean, we talked about some of the standouts there. There are a lot of guys that I think you could have chosen for that. Um, I, I just think not to be boring, but, the way Jacob Eason played, I was, it was really pleasantly it, it surprised because he hasn't necessarily had the greatest camp. Can I just clarify one thing? Hmm. Not to make it all about me. Just so people know, just because a guy's name is Jake doesn't mean that his birth given name is Jacob. Oh, do people call you Jacob sometimes as a joke? People, people assume that it's Jacob. Yeah, they're like, "Oh, Jake." So, like, is your name Jacob? No, it is not. Jake is your name, Jacob. Your birth name, or is it just Jake? Who, who are you talking to? Just Jake? Yeah. yeah. Well, some people are just named Jake. Correct. Yeah. 
So it doesn't mean that okay. you are automatically a Jacob is all I'm saying. Because we have one other Jake here that Did is Did you notice, by the way, is, can we, the other Jake, can we take that bus shot again? Because let me show you something that's of concern to me, Derek. My face is getting fat again. It's the beta block. Just look at this. Stop? No, look. Like, can we can we do this off air? We can run those cameras during the breaks, and then you can. I just feel it's round. Measure your face fat. But like it just. When we're not actually trying I wanna, to do a get, show. Should I get the Botox? Is it the Botox? Does that help you think? I'll tell you, IMCU did not sign up for this part. Indiana members credit <laughs> union proud to sponsor Corey and Schultz, a full service I, financial I institution. You looking fat. Offering that's, free that's checking the, accounts. That's what people are saying, and that's what worries me. With these statements, low auto rates, and more, see what IMCU can do for you. Can you read that for me IMCU. again, please? IMCU.com. Membership shav- savings required. Federally insured. NCUA. Can you read the first few be- the first few benefits? That are IMCU you know, is a full service financial full service. institution yep. offering free checking accounts with e statements, low auto rates, and more. Check out what they can do for you. IMCU.com. And the best part about a credit union that is a member's credit union is you know that your money is going safe with other people who are obviously yeah. in with the same interest. And as what's you. important to us? That first one, Indiana and Maine. Bailey and Wood. Well, yeah, in Connecticut, I we guess. A, we have a we growing stickers. We have a growing list of viewers and listeners in Maine. I know Matthew is really doing a great job. He is recruiting for Quarry and Chills absolutely in the Northeast, where my brand power is still pretty strong. That that's the thing. That's kind <laughs> yeah. of the difference between me and you is that you get a thirty mile radius outside of Indianapolis. Nobody knows Jake Quarry. I'm known in multiple regions of the country. I'll have you know that the uh, principal of Shelbyville High School. I met the other day. Yeah, that would be a separate region of the country, Shelbyville. So I guess <laughs> it is. that is no, a good point. Believe me, have you been to Shelbyville, Derek? Yeah, no, I have. I, I am not being sarcastic. A, yeah, that's I'm being separate, 100% That's a serious. separate area of the continent, truth be told. <laughs> uh, so who is your play? You're saying Jacob, Jacob Eason? Yeah, Jacob Eason. I'll go along with that. I, yeah. I think especially pocket poise. I mean, there, are, there were a couple times maybe where he held the ball too long, but – his ability to stand in under pressure and still deliver like he did on the Paris Campbell play, for example, um, it was impressive. This is a guy that was a five-star recruit and played at big-time yep. colleges. I mean, it's not like he's coming out of James Madison. You right? see it. I mean, you see it physically that there are some talents there. Uh, and, and I think it's a great example, actually, the dichotomy between Ellinger and, and, and Eason because – Ellinger's more of like kind of the gritty, not that he wasn't a heralded recruit too, but kind of like the gritty, you know, rely on my smarts kind of player, whereas Easton is more the, if you're building a quarterback from scratch physically, that's what you want. You know one guy um, that is of interest to me, an interesting note, show everybody your T-shirt here from the shop indie. Yeah. It's my man Rodrigo. Okay. Is he in a, you know, is he a lock? Uh, he's not a lock, but he is still the clear favorite for the PK one role. And he was uh, perfect in Sunday's game and has had a really nice camp so far. I don't, so who's, who's, sorry, I did. My, my wife's you. texting me. Yeah, what, what, what's going on? Do this, we need sour cream? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if we do. We have cilantro tonight's taco night, in the Schultz household. That's Tuesdays. That's so predictable to do it Tuesday. We like to change it up. We're we're a little bit wackier like that. Like to keep people on their toes. Monday's taco night. When do you do Cinco de Mayo on the seventh? We don't. Do, that's really stupid to do Cinco de Mayo. We're we're grown adults. Um, cilantro. You jalapenos, also you also onion. like. Don't I got you do I got refried beans. Chinese on Thanksgiving. We love Chinese on Thanksgiving. The yeah. best. Okay. Love it. That's fine. My favorite thing. Because who likes turkey? Ugh, it's so dry. Do you get avocado, guacamole? Do you have that? Uh, We have avocado, yeah. Very good for you. We have that. I don't think we have – I'm not a big sour cream person. I don't think we have any. So I'm going to – I'll text back during the break. I think it's inappropriate on the show to do that while we're taping, you know? I don't want to distract okay. the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, okay. Sure, so long as you say so. Let's talk uh, about – Blankenship, I, look, consistency not an issue. It depends on whether or not they feel that they need a kicker that has uh, – a further out range. Yeah, the range is the big thing. Right. Um, I, I think accuracy, he's fine, but range is the big thing. Let's talk Malice in the Palace. Um, released on Netflix, Jermaine O'Neal, an executive producer. So you kind of knew what you were getting a little bit. But at the same time, Jake, I was glad that the Pacers players were finally able to get their portion of the narrative out there. Understood. Because for so long, that's been ignored. And while I agree with you, Folks in Indianapolis, or if you're you or me, there's nothing in that documentary that's going to be new. 
you know John Green, the cup thrower, you know all that kind of went on and the, and the aftermath of it. But I think nationally, a lot of people still were holding on to the original narrative that these were three rogue pacers that went up into the stands and started attacking fans, which could not be further from the truth. That That isn't what happened at all. I'm not excusing their actions, particularly the actions of Steven Jackson. Is, because is Ron I, our I, test here? Is this profane? Is it intentional? Oh no, I think he's doing. Come on, right? Uh, I think the I think the middle finger is just extended, but I think they they caught that frame wrong. Okay. You don't think so? I, it's Ron Artest. Who knows? Yeah. I love Ron Artest, but who knows? Um, okay, well we apologize in advance if anybody's offended by that picture, but I think that actually kind of they encapsulates probably, Ron. They probably wouldn't have noticed if Ron I hadn't brought better it to than everything. Attention. But look, it, it, it was the, the big failures to me. You tell me if you agree with this. The two biggest failures to me of the malice of the palace were palace security and the officiating crew not getting things under control on the court immediately. That's Everybody fair. was kind of allowed to break into these factions. You know, Ben Wallace was completely beside himself because he's butthurt about them getting stuffed into a garbage can. You know, well, his brother passed away. That eh. Ben Wallace was angry because he was mad that he felt like our test fouled him too hard, which I don't even think he did. Um, I mean, if you really want to, you can maybe blame both coaches for having starters on the floor. I with think that's, a, I think that's a very underrated uh, you know, that, that aspect. That was of probably it. part of it too, but I'm glad that the Pacers side of the story was released and now people can decide to make of it whatever they want. You know, when the palace, when the malice at the palace happened, I was working Derek at channel six at the time. Right. And I, I'll say this for Pacer fans. Okay. During my time at Channel 6, there is no event that was more scrutinized or more edited or more aired in terms of the video than the brawl that took place between the Pacers and the Pistons. It quite simply was something that led our newscast and or sportscast seemingly every day for what felt like weeks upon weeks upon months on end. And it showed and it kind of, I guess, illuminated the emotions that come with being a fan because it started out, Derek, as... Everybody was, you know, free run our test. And free. you're getting a, another message here. Oh, it's from Jordan, my coworker. Needs a keyboard and an extra mouse for Friday. We're on the game day crew for do you want to, Warren and Sarah. You want to get him the sour cream? You want right to get him there. sour cream while he's out? I see Sports Network, my um, TV. But at any rate, in the beginning, it was sympathy for the players and everyone against the Pacers. And then as time went on, it became, it did become a bitterness, A, to our test because of all that goes into Ron our test. Sure. And then B, really into Jermaine, Jermaine O'Neal, I think. It really stained Jermaine's, just the overall image of him. I, mean, I remember when Jermaine O'Neal was announcing, or when he was moving on from Indiana and he made the mention that he thought his name should be in the rafters and people just laughed at it. I, I think the documentary does show a perspective that maybe people needed. And now you can kind of step back and take all the emotion out of it and just objectively look and analyze at what took place. And when you do that, I think what you see is an imperfect storm on multiple levels. As you talked about, the players being on the floor, the lack of security, the Reggie mentioned it in the documentary, the, the people from up high that are probably intoxicated and irritable moving down mm -hmm. late in the game and being right there. Um, the only thing about it that I learned, and I don't mean that condescendingly, but I just I was around it so much when it happened. The only thing that I thought, well, I don't remember ever hearing that, was the part about Jamal Tinsley saying to yeah. our test. I don't think I had heard that either. You got You're the right. foul to yeah. give here. Um, let me ask you this. In your opinion, which two people were, if, if, if anyone, if anyone, which two people's images or perception of them were benefited by the documentary? Well, J.O. was the executive producer, and I think a lot of it had to do with cleaning up. He did get his suspension reduced, and Jermaine O'Neal's right. Everything that Jermaine O'Neal did that night was when other people came up to him. I really do feel like that was, you know, him cold cocking that guy that looked like Turtle from Entourage. Right. That dude, once you step on the court, all bets are off. Like, well, what about if, if I get in a tiger's cage, 
You know, I'm in I'm in right. trouble there. And if I'm an NBA player and somebody's on the court, I don't know what you're about to do to me. I don't blame Jermaine O'Neal. I for didn't understand him. this. The one guy that in the original footage of the brawl, I always thought the guy in the rainbow wig was like a secu- an usher. And then uh, he's in the documentary, if you haven't seen it yet, and it is very good, available on Netflix. The guy that wears the rainbow wig is still wearing the rainbow wig. Yeah. It's a They're harsh. interviewing him, and he still has on the wig and the glasses, and I'm like, bro, it's it's been like 17 years, right? Yeah. Well, the kid saying, well, and, and then the other fan saying, I got sucker punched. Look, man, you stepped on the court. You're lucky you didn't die because right. Reggie's right. If if Jermaine O'Neal hadn't slipped, that would have been a problem. So I think his reputation is the one that was helped the most by this. But as much as I feel for those guys and what they went through, and, and let's face it, the, the big kind of the elephant in the room here is the race element of this. Oh, absolutely. People were uncomfortable with the cornrows and everything. And, and so the thug mentality – that's very thinly veiled. You know what thug mentality means when people are saying that. And it's embarrassing that so many people felt that way at that time. But as much as I feel for those guys, you know, Ron Artest played 10 more years, got a ring. Steven Jackson and J.O. played 10 more years and made umpteen million dollars. As always, the real losers of what happened that night were the Pacers franchise and the fans. Those are the people that lost. Right. Everybody else recovered something from that. The, the Pacers franchise, to this day, has never truly recovered from that. Um, I thought Steven Jackson – I love Steven Jackson. But I think it was a good chance for Steven Jackson, for people to finally kind of get to know Steven Jackson and the fact that you had to commend Steven Jackson's loyalty in it. Look, man, I just – yeah, I went up there because my, my teammate was in need of me. And I think Steven Jackson felt betrayed by Ron Artest. Um, I, I will, I will tell you this, Derek, I watched it with Shannon and Donnie was featured a lot. Correct. By the way, for and, people that don't know, Shannon is Donnie's daughter. Right. And I think it was a difficult watch for her. I don't know that she would admit that. I just did it for her, I guess. You know, I, she is fiercely loyal and proud of her father. And I think Donnie deserves some credit for saying, Look, it falls on me. Mm-hmm. And whether it does fall on Donnie or, or not, I don't know. Um, I commend him for saying that and would expect no less from him because that's how he has always been. But I think for anybody, it's difficult to see your father publicly admitting something that they are saying was their fault, yeah. even though I think most people would say it was not. The unfortunate thing to me about it is – the mid 2000s NBA was a time where that was a great window for somebody like the Pacers to right. win a title because no offense, but the Oh five, the, the, the Oh four and, and the Oh four Pistons and then the Oh five team and then the Oh six heat and Mavericks like that. It was a transitional yeah, period were, between Jordan's uh, dominance and LeBron's Kobe, dominance, right? Kobe was trying to figure himself out post Shaq and kind of his career, at least from a team standpoint, took a little bit of a dive in those, you know, I'd smush Parker and, and right. he had some really bad Lakers teams and there was no really true dominant force. Cause LeBron was still ascending. It wasn't until like Oh seven, Oh eight, Oh nine, that LeBron really started to come into his own. So those are, this little bitty window there where, yeah, I guess you had the Spurs, but it was hard to be really wowed by what the Spurs were doing where you, you felt like maybe a title was there for the taking. And you, you had uh, particularly the 06 Heat and the 04 Pistons, I think, were standouts of, yeah, they were nice stories. If you're actually ranking NBA title winners of the last 50 years, they're near the bottom of the well, list. Well, uh, here's the thing. I think it's very easy to say, it's it's very easy to look at it if you watch that documentary and say to yourself, this was the Pacers' best championship opportunity that went awry, and the brawl cost them a championship. And I think, Derek, the reality is, and you're fooling yourself if you think otherwise, is that, that is, maybe that's true, except for that if it wasn't the brawl, it was going to be something else. Because our test, and I love Ron Artest, I love him as a – as a player, he's a wonderful player. It's disingenuous to say that I'm close to him, but in my interactions with him, I like him a lot as a person. But I think our our test, and this is at no fault of Ron Artest or really anybody around him, I, I don't think that Ron Artest had a bad childhood. He had two parents in the house. He, he, he grew up in Queen Bridge, New York, and the housing developments there. But I think he had a chaotic childhood. And I think Ron Artest, the chaos that he became accustomed to growing up became his comfort zone. And so as a result of that, he was only comfortable when chaos was created. 
And if things were going smoothly, subconsciously then, he had to create chaos to be able to thrive. So if it wasn't the brawl, it was going to be something internally within them that was going to combust. Yeah. That's the reality of it. Yeah, I mean, you worry, and Ron would admit this, from a mental health standpoint, even he day-to-day didn't even really know Correct. where he was going and to be. And he says that. Yeah, and so, you know, we, we all... We all have that. Now, 16 years ago, I think we were far less aware of those things happening. Well, it certainly was more taboo to discuss, yeah. right? I yeah. mean, there's no doubt about it. But I'm, I, I am, I, again, just to kind of tie a bow in this whole thing, I'm glad they got that narrative out, and I'm glad that maybe this is the closure that they needed or that people needed to just kind of move on. Unpopular opinion, I, I don't like the pinstripe uniforms. I always really like the pinstripes. I, I like the pinstripes more than the flow really, There's too much going on there. Yeah? Yeah. I, they're, they're just real clean. I just think there's too much going on. The next course, jersey that they had was I've the most boring. I've got a pinstripes right here. But. Well, that's true. You're a little bit overdressed for this show. You know, the, their, be, their most underrated uniforms were the Clark Kellogg area. The, the Clark Kellogg era. Yeah, I, I didn't hate those. They're just Indiana, and then they had the, the P oh, on the Oh, I shorts. thought you meant like Reggie Miller well, uh, rookie year. Uh, the Wayman Tisdale okay. Reggie Miller ones yeah. with the Pacers across yeah, here in the Royal Blue. Those were cool. Yeah, those are those very are. 80s. They were. You look at those and you immediately um, think 80s. We have features to get to, correct? Let's do it next. Okay. It's Corey and Schultz, ISC Sports Network. Meet Kate. She has a lot to juggle. Family, work, it can lead to trying days and tired nights. But we know Kate, and at Indiana Members Credit Union, we know at some point her space at a premium life may change. IMCU is here to help Kate and you find your space. Now, add on a remodel with an introductory rate of 1.9% APR on a home equity line of credit. Today, it's all about Kate. Tomorrow, it's all about you. Because at IMCU, it's you that matters. You're watching Query and Schultz on the ISC Sports Network. It's here. The moment that will define you. So think of this moment as your moment. The one you've been waiting for. You were built for it. And so were we. WGU, the online university where ambition never rests. Your life is on the go. Now your viewing habits can be on the go. With the ISC Sports Network app, your team is at your fingertips. You can download years worth of content from the ISC Sports Network library. High school, college, special events, weekly and monthly shows, wherever you find your favorite app. And you can always find out more information at iscsportsnetwork.com. Welcome back to Query and Schultz here on the ISC Sports Network. I'm Jake Query. That is Derek Schultz. And, you know, when it comes to this time of year where, yeah, sure, I mean, all of a sudden you think to yourself, it is unbelievably hot out there and I got to get the air conditioner. You forget about the fact that we're just a couple of months away, Derek, from that time where all of a sudden you make make sure the furnace is going as well and things get tricky. Listen, whether it be heating or cooling, the place – that you need. The only place that you need is Love Heating and Air Conditioning. Love-HVAC.com has been around for over 100 years in central Indiana, and it's a very simple formula that allows you to last for over a century and four family generations deep, and that is commitment to customers and customer service. Checkbox. Love's got that. No problem. 24-hour on-call maintenance for that matter. Knowledge of product. They have that. They've been around, I know, because I grew up with two of them. And they grew up around the heating and cooling business because they're the fourth generation now. So that goes without saying. Great prices. And like I mentioned, great quality of the product. All for you at love-hvac.com. Love heating and air conditioning. Serving Central Indiana since 19. 19- 20. And they also bring us our Love That Play, our favorite play from the weekend. We might have two different answers on this, Derek, but yours is which? I'm going to be boring and go back to the Colts. I love that touch throw from Eason to Campbell. Probably the best throw that we've seen from Jacob Eason uh, in the last couple of weeks. But because it was Paris Campbell, too, I wanted to focus on that because you talk about another guy that this is a really big, big year for season him. for because they, they need – they've been saying it. He's going he's gonna to break out. He's going to break out. He's going to break out. Eventually, you got to be healthy and available to do that, and he looks healthy and available. And when he's healthy, 
Paris Campbell looks really good. Do you so, think he's the best NFL player named for a European capital? Uh, I, you just always like, kind of blindside me with these questions. Um, is there anyone named Munich, or is it Berlin for Germany? Is Berlin the capital? Um, Brussels for Belgium. It's it's Berlin. Okay, is it, isn't it? No, wait a minute. Lisbon for Spain. London Fletcher. When he played. Okay. Is London the capital? I, I don't know. I don't know my capitals. I know Hartford is Connecticut. Um, I think Springfield is Illinois. Ohio's Columbus. Name the state. I'll tell you any. any just name the state. Rhode Island. Come on. <laughs> Providence. Name another one. Rapid fire. Come on. New rapid. Hampshire. New Hampshire. Yeah. Concord. Maine. Uh, Augusta. Uh, Vermont. People. Montpelier. Yeah, because people think Burlington, I think, yeah. for Vermont. Okay, good. Good job. Actually, Germany's a, a Germany's I'm, I'm a not as good one. on capitals, country. I remember learning them all. Istanbul was, that was uh, once Constantinople. Turkey, yeah. right? Why did Constantinople get the works? Uh, Athens for Greece. Nobody's business but the Turks. It's Athens, right, for Greece? Australia. Melbourne. No. Sydney. No. Brisbane. No. Toowoomba. That's the only other Australian <laughs> town I could no, I, I, I have no idea. I always forget. So look up Australia. Search for the oh, you don't even it's know. Cape. You asked me. Like, no, you're it's, all it's smart. Cape, it's Cape something. What's Australia? Or no, maybe it's, it starts with a P. Okay, Australia's a weird forget one. Forget it. I'm looking up Australia. God, you just ruin every segment. Like, what kind of question is that? What, what kind of question Who's is the best what? country, European country capital name? Like, what is, London what is Fletcher is a pretty does good call, even right? mean? I'm looking up the Australian capital, Derek. As okay, you were. God. Canberra. I should have known Eason that. Easton to Campbell. I said it starts with a C. Canberra. I've never heard of that before. Okay, in my well, life. you have now. Easton to Campbell. I, when Yogi would come up to the plate, they needed I need a home to go run. With People your say buddy, Canberra. Your buddy Mike in Australia. Michael. Michael, yeah. Um, get in that Gold Coast condo. I, oh, yeah. Well, they've got to open the border up first. Well, that's it. Yeah. You know, I have become a fan. Of Australian rules football. Yeah. I started watching it Friday it's nights. cool. Do you understand it? Not at all. And it's, that's why it's kind of cool. You just watch <laughs> and you're like, whoa, what's it, going on? It's actually way more simple than you think. Yeah. And so once you understand the rules, it's pretty fun because there's not a, there are basically no rules. Yeah, I just think all that stuff like rugby, I, I, lacrosse, like do you all. Do, or, or, you or like or, this when they score and they come out and they go. Yeah. <laughs> Or the elements of those sports, I think, are really, really – because I love to watch – we had we had big high school lacrosse teams in Connecticut, and I, I loved watching that You sport. got suspended for the lacrosse game, right? Yeah, tinfoil man. Yeah, we, we wrapped my buddy McKeel up in tinfoil with a tinfoil lacrosse stick on senior day, and he ran out on the field. And then um, one of the kids told on him, so then he tackled them. Um, what, was then, the, what was the motivation of the prank? He had a dream once that he was dressed up in tinfoil and um, was dancing around to a Power Man 5000 song named This Is uh, This Is What It's Like When Worlds Go Light. Remember that song? He was really into like Linkin Park and like that, you know, like uh, Slipknot and stuff like that. Um, I don't know, that heavy music. And so whatever. He's, he's kind of a weirdo. Was, and was he into the doobie? Uh, I'm not going to comment on that for I Mark mean, or for anybody else at that but time. If you if you were in tinfoil and you're running, didn't your didn't the tinfoil just no? Because we would wrap it. I, I usually did the wrapping, and we would make sure that the crotch area was actually. He would wear black gym shorts, so we wouldn't do. It would take one roll of 250 foot Reynolds wrap. We always got the high. You never get the store brand because store brand would just peel off. Reynolds wrap was good and sturdy. And we would leave the crotch area open just for dexterity purposes. So like when you're running like this. The tinfoil doesn't rip because we did this at the senior night of the basketball game. Um, and then we did it um, at the Valentine's Day dance for the freshmen. We were seniors at that time. So people had kind of known that tinfoil man was going to make an appearance at big events. But then once he assaulted somebody else on the lo the lacrosse team, that's when it became a problem. We all got suspended was from school. Was his face covered? Yep. So we had a tinfoil cape, uh, tinfoil face, eye holes, and then a breathing apparatus. Uh, not apparatus, but uh, a cutout for that as well. But gym shorts, um, tank top. Did would, everyone would be know who the tinfoil man was? Most people were in on the joke because we recorded it with my camcorder that I got in ninth grade uh, for Christmas. Okay. Yeah. Do you still have the tape? 
I have some of the tapes. Some of the other tapes. Mark sent two of the tapes to MTV, and then we were on MTV Real Life High School Pranks or whatever that show was, where I actually drove back to Connecticut, and we filmed for that. Um, and we did, like, a reenactment of Tinfoil. It was really stupid. But we went back to MTV, and we're like, okay, you use the tapes. And they said, no, 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 anything you send to us, we keep. So some of those tinfoil videos, unfortunately, are, are lost forever. Did you go on YouTube? But there's a bunch of stuff on those videos, like us, like, uh, I don't know, cruising around Trumbull and doing some things that we probably shouldn't have done at that time. But we're normal, like, high school things. Doobie? I, again, I'm not going to comment on that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What were you talking about? Love that play? Did we did we do love that play? Uh, for my love yeah, that play, by the, the way, uh, I'm gonna <laughs> go. I'm gonna go with AJ Allmendinger getting the win. Yeah, good for him at the speedway because. And, and here's the thing: not just AJ Allmendinger getting the win, but having the presence of mind immediately following to pay tribute to Robin Miller, our friend, who's who looks great. I saw Robin and talked to him um, at the the track, and he has really rebounded. He great. he had a pretty bad scare a couple of weeks ago, and his you know he's getting his strength back, but. And then he also paid tribute to Bob Jenkins. So those two things, it was cool. For AJ I, I like it when guys get it, you know, and, and clearly totally. AJ gets it when it comes to Indy. Uh, let's get to our new-ish feature as well with our friends at WGU Indiana and our Sage Move of the Week. I thought this one was obvious if you want to just piggyback on me. Major League Baseball has done so many things wrong and done so many stupid things over the years, particularly recently. That Field of Dreams game was a great idea, a great concept, and – greatly executed by the players on the field because you had this tremendous ninth inning where the Yankees rally for four runs with two outs to take the lead, and then Tim Anderson comes up and walks it off with a moonshot into the corn stalks. What were the dimensions of that field? I don't actually know that. Was It, it was – I mean, it was cool. Yeah. There were a lot of home runs hit. I mean, it wasn't, like, tremendously shorter than a right. regulation MLB you, field, but I don't know the exact dimensions. You ready for this? Yeah. I've never seen Field of Dreams. Uh, you're not missing – I find Kevin Costner to be extremely annoying. So everything like that Costner. he's in – well, that I mean, that kind of explains some stuff with the show's dynamic, I guess. The Why? fact that you don't find him annoying and I do. Oh, no. Because I, I, I always thought that he was kind of into himself and smarmy and – Can you blame a guy? Some similarities there, I think. Here's the thing. People say to me, they're like, how have you not seen Field of Dreams? If you think that I've never seen the scene where he's like, is this heaven? No, it's Iowa. Like, Dad, you want to catch this? I mean, famous, you, famous you line. Can't, you can't yeah. avoid I mean, I've seen if it. If you ten, build it, they will come is an, a hugely right. famous I've line. I've seen it a thousand times, the scene. Yeah. The movie itself just leading up to it, all that. I, you know, I don't and watch the full thing. It's just about a fellow that builds a stadium and then ghosts it, come, it's, right? It's I I would say that it's like a, it's like a C-plus movie, but with a very memorable – kind of storyline that people really gravitated towards right. what i didn't like is that people were like well fuel the dream sucks okay just because you didn't like it doesn't mean that it's not insanely cool to see somewhere in the middle of iowa two baseball teams I, playing in a cornfield i did think of this derek hockey has what do they call it in the winter time when they do that i think it's winter, winter classic the winter classic yeah. so hockey has the winter classic um baseball did this field of dream things the nfl has the hall of fame game which is played basically in a high school stadium yep. So what would basketballs be? What can basketball do? Can the NBA play a game in the I've Hoosier always, gym? I've always kind of felt like Christmas was their like quirky event day where it's like that quadruple header and yeah, everybody, prominent players, prominent teams playing on Christmas. The only two things – but if the NBA was going to do an off, uh, you know, yeah. a venue away from – Rucker Park or something like that. It would like have that. to be Rucker it, Park, It would have right? to be something like or that. Or the Hoosier gym. Yeah. They can't play there because of the, the court size, though. It yeah, had to right, be, and right. I, I, Rucker Park may not be regulation either, but I, it, that's what I'm kind of thinking. You know, to me, the NBA is has always been more of a city, urban driven game, and that's, that's why I would lean towards. Can you imagine something like Rucker Park as them playing like a Kujin. pickup game at West Fourth? I know it'd be it'd be really really cool to see something like that. Yeah, but I kudos to MLB because it, it was, was cool. it was a great night. I'm, I'm going, a Yankee fan, and I had a great time. Uh, I'm going to a White Sox game this week. Oh yeah. Yep. I've never been to that park. Playing the A's. Never been to that park. Yeah, it's cool. Mm. Not as cool A's as A's are one of those teams, man, that, like, they're always good. They are. And then I watch, like, their all-star game, and they're like, 
you know, um, Mike Williams up to bat. And I'm like, who the hell is this guy? And he's batting like 320 with like 35 yeah, dingers. Right. They always have like, good. They always have good pitching dude? too. And you're like, yeah, who, who, you know. who are you? Yeah. I do remember that rotation when they had like Zito and Hudson and Mulder all coming up at the same time. But yeah, you're right. Outside of that, it's been hard to uh, discover new A's players. Are we getting to our quick hits? Yeah, we'll do quick hits and wrap up next with Byron. Oh, IU Blue. basketball. We didn't talk about that. They're part of our quick hits. Oh, okay. It's Quarian Schultz. See? Now we can get to a little bit of everything. I felt like we were leaving a lot on the cutting room floor <laughs> Go previously. Chad. ISC Sports Network. At Bailey & Wood, we pride ourselves on our five-star customer service. But at our core, we're a family. Family owned and family to our customers, staff, and our community. From charity events to recognizing hometown heroes, we prioritize giving back to our communities that have always supported our growth. So let us help you get your dream home today. McCulley in time! Oh, no! It's good. <laughs> One is good. There you oh, go. Wow, Dawson makes a great catch. <laughs> Spin, win, three, bury it for Leland Walker. Tie the game they do with the dunk by Malik Edmonds. What a play. Oh my oh, 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 goodness. I feel a little momentum starting to fall in place. That is oh. the end. Wrestler! Oh. Wrestler! Whoa! It's here. that will define you. So think of this moment as your moment. The one you've been waiting for. You were built for it. And so were we. WGU, the online university where ambition never rests. Back for a final time here on Corey and Schultz, ISC Sports Network. Thanks to Jake Morris and Greg Regstraw behind the glass for making this possible for us. We've implemented uh, not really a segment, but a, a new feature just to make sure we don't leave anything out. And maybe things that don't deserve a full segment, like Malice in the Palace or the Colts preseason or, game, I felt like deserved a full segment. Or are you segment. playing an AAU game? Yes. I didn't okay. feel like deserved a full segment, but at least acknowledging them and giving quick thoughts on it. So our quick hits. And Bailey and Wood. We're going to attach to that. Our friends at BAWFG.com. If you're looking to refinance, rates are still super duper low. If you're looking to be pre-approved and uh, for a mortgage when you are buying a new home, go ahead and check out Mike Wood and his team, Bailey and Wood Financial Group. Five-star customer rating, 13 Indiana branch locations, BAWFG.com, 855-350-HOME. Okay. Let's lead off with IU. They go to the Bahamas, have a two-game exhibition with a Serbian pro team named uh, BC... Mega? I think that's right. BC Mega? However you say that. How old are the guys on that Won team? Won both games? I, I don't know. I just know that they're professionals, so 19-plus. Right. Um, and I like the fact that, according to Zach Osterman and some of the write-ups that I read, um, a much more wide-open, kind of free-flowing offense, especially in the first game because they were kept – I think uh, BC Mega had like 25 turnovers in the first game, so they were doing a lot of transition stuff. I think that what is really what was missing from Indiana's – the structure and, and the offense was just way too bogged down under Archie Miller. Now a little more of a free-flowing, maybe an NBA-esque kind of style under Which Mike Woodson. Which is kind of funny to think that Mike Woodson, who is a guy that played under Bob Knight, you know, motion offense, man-to-man -man defense, motion offense, man-to-man -man defense. I, I think Mike Woodson is obviously, you know, more flexible than that. That's not to say that's not flexible, but more open than that. There are a lot of people that thought, like, if we can just get a Bob Knight guy in there, then we're going to just do Bob Knight's systems. I, I don't think that's going to be the case. I think Mike Woodson is going to make an offense that appeals to young players and also takes advantage of the fact that he's an NBA guy in terms of the recruiting. The one thing uh, I found intriguing, Derek, I didn't look at this for game one, but in game two I saw, I believe, one of the last scholarship guys to get into the game was Christian Lander. Now, yeah. I don't know if that was a health thing or – Well, I, I wonder if But that seems like his style. And yeah, there's a little bit of a logjam there right now, though, I because know. you have Rob Finnessy, who by all accounts looks better and hopefully mentally is in the right place because he was, 
I don't mean to be mean. He was a total disaster for the 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 back portion of last year, especially offensively. And then they really like Xavier Johnson at guard, the, right. the pit transfer. So um, I think they're hoping that point guard can be kind of a um, some of their parts position for them, right. where they get just enough from all three and of I those think, guys to, to I have think a good Bates spot. Bates is a guy, isn't that his name? Mm-hmm. Um, that also they they could see handling the ball a little bit. I think. Look, I think Mike Woodson is going to be able to come up with an offense and a style that utilizes anybody who has the ball in their hands is going to have the ability to both create and or then start facilitating an offense. You know, the the true point guard, shooting guard. I, you know, I think it gets away from that a little bit. Second quick hit. A, a little bit surprised that Cassius Stanley got his qualifying offer pulled after it was originally extended to him. So Pacers have a roster spot available. According to Jay Michael of the Indy Star, they are looking for a third point guard because they don't have that anymore now that Aaron Holiday has been traded. Right. Um, so I kind of something of, to keep an eye on. I kind of think of Edmund Sumner as that guy. Yeah, he's such a hybrid. I like him. I don't I know like if Sumner. he's point two guard. I don't even know if you really kind of pigeonhole him into one yeah. thing. Cause I do can, like Edmund Sumner, though. He can do. Yeah, I think the Pacers like Edmund Sumner. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the athleticism has always been tantalizing for him, but – the athleticism for Cassius Stanley is tantalizing. He'll find – I believe I read that the Pacers said you'll have a camp invite so you can come back and earn a spot, but he can also now, of course, right. go somewhere else and see if, hey, look at this roster. Maybe there's a spot for me here instead. Uh, third quick hit. Roger Federer out for the U.S. Open and for many months needs a third knee surgery and 40 years old, kind of starting to wonder. Great career, though. If pretty soon this is going to be it. It, it just – it stinks that he's going to end up getting passed, certainly by Djokovic and, and probably more. Can I do a fourth quick hit? Yeah. Speaking of surgeries, we learned just before taping today that Tom Griswold, who is, of course, one of the founding members, anchors of the Bob and Tom show, legendary radio show based out of here in Indianapolis, and who is a guy that's been unbelievably oh, loyal and guy. supportive to both Derek yeah. and myself over the years, uh, had heart surgery. It was a planned surgery, but it was a little more elaborate than they anticipated. He is apparently resting comfortably and on the men, but best wishes to Tom Griswold. Yeah. One of the great dude. And the great thing about Tom is that Tom's never really kind of been about himself. So once he fully recovers from this, as he will do, you probably won't hear about it over and over again. Hey, remember remember when Tom had the heart thing? Hey, remember when Tom had the heart thing? Like other people, public figures that have had heart things and people can't seem to let it go. Ten month anniversary next week, Derek. You coming over? Hey, remember Jake had a heart? Yeah, well, he's fine now, so let's stop talking about it. God, <laughs> get it. Wait till the Jeez. one month year. One month anniversary, I'm having a cigar. <laughs> or just chugging an energy drink, <laughs> just pouring them all over yourself. Yeah. Uh, I'm fine now, <laughs> impervious to it. Uh, let's get to Bite or Bowl Bleep from our friends yeah. at the shop. The shopindie.com is where you can find all of their t shirt offerings, not just their N L I. N I L. Name, image, likeness. Oh, Race okay. Thompson is the latest. I Trace like Jackson Davis. David reason. Bell. NIL. Yeah, NIL. They got their hot rod shirts as well. Deer Creek and all their other offerings like the Reggie Miller shirt, their traditional collection you can find at uh, theshopindy.com. Brick and mortar locations at uh, Clay Terrace and Carmel and the Strip in Broad Ripple. 918 Broad Ripple mm-hmm. Avenue. That's right. I forgot that BK gave you the new address That's when right. he was with us last week. BK. Here's what we do. Uh, I give a statement. Jake and I go back and forth whether we buy or it's bull bleep. Statement one. IMS should immediately go back to the Oval for their next cup race. Bite or bull bleep? Uh, bull Schultz. You give it a couple years for, you know, look, one minor tweak that need, I say minor, I mean, but I'm just, you know, you make a tweak to that curbing in the S's, you go back to it, you let it grow, you let people see that it can be pretty exciting having stock cars on the road course, and you got a new reason that people have to come out to be able to say they went there. Yeah, I agree. I, I think, and it, this goes back to what we said during the segment, the racing when it was – green flag was good like I, I thought there was a lot of action it's just the ending was a complete mess and that's what people are going to remember unfortunately so I, I want to see them go back to the real course I'm just not I, I get it it's the oval and it's famous but once you get past just the fact that hey this is the Indianapolis Motor Speedway oval there are no right. other real attributes to that race you're right that's it statement two: Tim Tebow will make the Jaguars roster Ooh. It's been pretty rough in the clips that I've seen so far. There was one that went viral of this kind of... Uh, and that wasn't even his worst block. Pass by block, yeah. Um, I think for the first... Honestly, 
for a year, I think he will, and I'll tell you why. Because, again, I'll go back to, it takes the pressure off Trevor Lawrence because everybody's going to be talking about Tebow. I don't think he's going to make the roster. Okay. I don't think so. I think you can get away with issuing somebody a camp invite and having them there as kind of a – and I don't think they necessarily did it as a publicity stunt. I think they really did believe, hey, let's at least take a look to see if there's something yeah. there. But it's a far cry from actually Urban Meyer may see him as a locker room guy, though. You never know. And people are like, well, he's jacked. Who cares? Everybody's jacked out there. you got to be You're able right to play. That. you got to be able to play. How do you think play. Trevor Lawrence looked? Uh, looked electric on that one. The one highlight throw that I saw looked great. It, for me, it's just it, it's harder for me to take Zach Wilson seriously because he looks like he's 13 years he old. He does, but he played well, right? I, I guess, yeah. And he seems like I mean, his BYU tape was amazing, but yeah. then again, it was BYU. But you said that about Josh Allen. Remember, I remember watching him being like, "This guy completed 57 percent of his passes at Wyoming," right? And people are making a big deal out of him. And look, he's looks like one of the top five quarterbacks in the league right now. Who was big on him? Yeah. Okay. Blind squirrel finds nuts and all that. <laughs> okay. I don't actually have a third one. I was trying to think of something like that made me angry this week or something that would work for you, – you know what? Just kind of a statement. This isn't really a bite or bowl belief, something I've noticed, and I wanted you to back me up or see what you thought about this because you're far more in tune with Indianapolis than I am. We went down and did a great event at the Dirt Yard, a wiffle ball, a Circle City wiffle ball on Saturday with ISC Sports Network, and we've seen a lot of sides of town, Irvington and the east side – um, obviously what they've done over at Mass Ave West side into Speedway goes without saying the North side and all that become kind of revitalized some of it gentrified, which I know some people don't like one area that I feel like has always been ignored and I, it could be really cool. It's really convenient to get down there. And I don't know why there's nothing there. The immediate South side, like once you get a mile past Lucas Oil stadium, it's just, all, it, it's just, you know, it's nothing. It's just right. kind of like it some like forgotten about houses right. and some industrial yeah. fencing, You're right. <laughs> you know, yards. Off road, you get down there. And yeah. I'm like, it's so easy to get into downtown and you have access right to the highways. Like, why why wouldn't that be an area where investors I, wanted to be? Maybe because it's close to, like, the water treatment plants and you know, yeah. environmental stuff. I guess. Like, I the tox a, dump is over there. Yeah. I have a biter bullshits for you. Okay. Um. Both teams in this year's World Series will be in cities that are based or or on an ocean. Oh, so you're thinking like Dodgers and Rays? That'd yeah, two of them. Yeah, uh, or I mean, a Boston Atlantic yeah, Ocean. Red I Sox, guess yep. even though they've they've fallen off a little bit. Um, I'll say bull bleep to that. Just because I think if I play the percentage odds, percentage-wise, it'll be better to pick somebody that's not. Let me look at the standings again. I mean, the White Sox aren't in an ocean. Houston's not on the water, right? No. Yeah. I mean, that's correct. It's not. Uh, well, Oakland looks like they might make the playoffs. The Yankees are in the mix. Yeah. Um, Atlanta is not. Milwaukee's not. Oh, God, I forgot about the Giants are like 40 games over 500. I forgot about the Giants. Okay, maybe the percentage odds actually are that. Uh, okay, sure, I'll buy it then. I, I think between the White Sox. But you need both teams correct. to be. Yeah, I think so between, not just one. Between the White Sox, the Braves, uh, the Astros that you mentioned, I, I'll even throw the Reds in there for fun. I, there's a chance one of them breaks through and gets to the World Series. I think the White Sox are going to the World Series, though. Reds, I think it's going to be the White Sox and the Giants. The Reds are in a tough spot because they're just kind of – they're not great. They're not bad. They're just well, kind of okay. They're hanging in their there. Their bullpen's terrible. Yeah. Terrible. Yankees are worse. Yankees' bullpen is just a total disaster. So next is show 49? 49 next. You know what's interesting? Yeah. That'll be – so the, the if you, show 49 will be my last as a 48-year-old. That's right. Your birthday's coming up. It is. Nobody remembers the date. I know it's in September. It is. Um, it's not like people are like, Schultz's birthday, February 27th. Boom. Right away. Jake's what, hasn't, when is really yours? Had a, hasn't resonated. You already know what mine is. I don't need to I tell don't. you. Yeah, you know what it is. I just okay. said it. So you can go back and roll back in the tape, maybe. <laughs> okay, 
on. It. You know exactly yeah. what I'm talking about. I'll be sure to do Thanks that. Thanks to our great sponsors, the Shop Indy, WGU Indiana, IMCU, Love Heating and Cooling. Indiana Members Credit Union. Chateau Kitchens, Bailey and Wood. And it was great to see everybody. I mean, even the, you, you know, the, the alley. Love heating and air conditioning? Yeah. The alley cats aren't active right now, but I did the first throw with, with Derek oh, yeah. Tell. And, and the, it was really impressive. Did you do better than when you threw the Not my throw. The, the game atmosphere was really did impressive. Did you do, was your first throw for the alley cats. Yeah. Were you more on target than when we got to do the first pitch at a UND softball game and they had two catchers lined up and yeah, you I threw, threw to the my catcher one. and you threw to my you catcher? You threw to the wrong one. No. Yeah. No, did not. Yeah, you threw to the wrong one. I was supposed to – it's supposed to go crisscross. Poor girl so ended up on the – So I was supposed to go across and you were okay. supposed to go this way. Yeah. And you, Poor you girl ended up on the 12-day DL. Okay. Because of some of these quick hits. I told you not to touch me. <laughs> okay. Well, we're getting off air now and then you can see about that. <laughs> Thanks to everybody involved with IC sure. Sports Network. We will see you next week, episode 49. I'm getting my beverage. Until then, bye-bye. Have a good week. Calling it time. Oh, no. It's good. <laughs> One is caught. There you oh, go. Wow, Dawson makes a great catch. Spin, win, three, bury it for Leland Walker. Tie the game. They do with a dunk by Malik Edmonds. What a play! Oh my oh, goodness! I feel a little momentum starting to fall. Well in way. Oh. Wrestler! Oh. Wrestler! Oh. Whoa! It's here. moment that will define you. So think of this moment as your moment. The one you've been waiting for. You were built for it. And so were we. WGU, the online university where ambition never rests.